contract. A couple of prerequisites for this tutorial is that you need to understand what Ethereum networks are, transactions, and compiling contracts. If you don't know what compiling contracts are, we have a link here, which is a way to show you how to compile a sample contract like an ERC721. But for today's lesson, we're going to do an ERC20 contract, and uh, it's compiled in Viper. So, And the first step into deploying a contract is having an account with some um, ETH or GUI, a uh, way to pay for the gas to deploy a contract. And if you don't know how to do that, we have a tutorial on that here, and you can um, make or generate an account. So if you look at it, we're going to do eight accounts list, and I have a bunch of accounts that have been generated or imported, and they have some sort of uh, gas money in there. So, um, and some of these uh, tutorial, um, and the, so actually, let's just get started. So, how to deploy a smart contract. Deploying a smart contract is a unique type of transaction where we don't necessarily care about the receipt as much as we care about the contract instance. That instance will allow us to interact with that contract with um, all the methods that we have implemented. So, that's why we have the contract instance and we can interact with it with that. So the purposes of, the, of this tutorial, we have three um, plugins that we use to show you that our ecosystem is pretty modular and we can use it how we like. The ENS will allow us to connect to a different type of, or allow us to deploy a contract using a .eth um, wallet. For example, we have here, and it basically just converts this to the contract address or the wallet address, so you can use it accordingly. Etherscan will allow us to look at a contract that has been deployed or any of the receipts that have been minted or whatever you do on the contract. And Alchemy is just a really cool way to um, connect to a remote ETH node so you can capture all the logs and actions in the contract to a place that is tangible. So for, uh, for a hot tip, there are many ways to connect to a different network and deploy a contract. We're just using this specific way. So. Once you have an account like this, we're going to, for example, we're going to show you we can do an ape console and uh, interact with the network. So, for example, this is our contract. So, this is what we've made. This is straight from the template. It has name, symbol, decimals. We minted, we have told that we want that this is the name of the, of the, of the contract. This is the token name, token symbol and making sure that we have it correctly inputted. Looks good. We're going to do a console. And we're going to, and doing a console without a network command is going to just connect us to the default stuff, which is local testnet. And so if we were to do dev equal accounts.load, it shouldn't have anything because we are connected to a local net, and um, that, there you go. There's no money in it. But if we were to connect to a console via a network, like that, what we have here, we should be able that the dev account actually should have some money. So now we go into load balance, and look at that. We have some money. So. Looks good. Looks very good. Excellent. So now let's actually deploy the contract that we have. We know how to deploy it because this is the name of our, of our contract, token.by. So if we were to do it right here, it's going to be dev our contract. Let's save it to a variable. We call it contract.dev.deploy project.token. And if it was named something else, you would just do project dot whatever the name of the contract is. Let's sign it. Yes. Password. Yep. 
And it's uh, actually probably deploying it. So if we go to this link, because we have Etherscan plugin installed, it comes to this really nice link. We'll go to the link there and see that it's actually being processed. Account creation, contract creation. Looks good. So let's keep going and figure that out. And so with our contract, now that it's deployed, we can actually interact with some of the methods that we have here. So we can check out the name, symbol, decimals. More importantly, which is probably the funnest part, is probably mint a token that you have. So let's mint some tokens and send it to ourselves. So we know that if we look at this, at this uh, method, it takes in some RD2 arguments, the address that you want to mint it to and how many tokens you want to mint, and then a sender equal the uh, sender equal dev, which is you making having access in signing the, the method. So let's uh, go into it. So the contract is deployed. Success, you can see it's the same thing, 6B5F, 6B5F. Looks great. So let's just click on that. And uh, let's do contract. If you didn't want to actually look at your contract here, you can also do it here. So if you do, if, since it's an IPython shell, we can do contract the other methods that were in here. So you can see that we have total supply, transfer, transfer phone, name, mint. So let's do contract, mint, and uh, we're gonna do dev. Let's do um, one, two, three tokens, 123 tokens, and uh, sender equal dev. Sign it, yes. And it saved the password, so we don't have to sign it. Uh, we don't have to use the password again. It's confirming it. You go into the contract instance here. We see that it's going to pop up once we get the first confirmation and uh, roll through it. And then we can check the total supply that it's changed. And so that makes us, brings us to step four what we're doing. And uh, I think we're basically there. We got 29 seconds ago, you have minted a token. So that's the address you're sending it to. Um, I need to check the transaction hash. Look at that. There you go. And the receipt is right there, and the receipt should be the same. CA12D, CA12D looks great. So we've done it. So actually pretty quick, pretty, pretty snazzy. Um, a really cool way to say, say, hey, you uh, created a contract, but you exited, and you want to go back to it. You can re-find the contract because you have the same address that you um, deployed it with. You can do contract and find the contract address at so project dot token dot at contract address, and that's why we saved it. There, let's copy that. Contract dot total apply. There you go, perfect. So this is exactly what we're looking for. And uh, this is how you manually deploy a smart contract using IPython shell. Um, but most cases, you don't want to deploy a contract uh, manually every single time. So we have a really nice way to auto-deploy contracts via scripts. So let's uh, step into that a little bit. You can write scripts using an uh, run command. So if we do apron um, command, that will register and run Python files to find out the scripts folder directory and do not start with an underscore. The scripts folder is a part of the API directory structure and you can learn more about it here and the technical documentation here. So this is our high architecture contracts, test scripts, and it configs. So if you look at us, that's what we have. And scripts is essentially goes a little deeper into what we're going to talk about. And uh, there are basically two methods of doing it. CLI scripts or main method scripts. So the easiest way is to do a main method script, which is essentially just this right here. You're going to do 
from Ape Import Project and just throw it into their, get user accounts. And if we were to do run deploy, so Ape run deploy. And the reason why it's called deploy is because that is the name of your script. So if you name it something else, you just call it that. That, and you prompt you for the user to spend because that's what you get. You use a selected account. Screw number three, which is dev. Ooh, actually we didn't deploy the account. Oh, it's because we didn't specify. When we don't specify the default, it's going to be local testnet. And I don't have any local testnet gas money to spend it here. So let's actually um, define it here. So if you were to go to the networks, so let's go into here and we go into networks. We can see that you configure the default ecosystem right here. And uh, let's just copy this and just name it the Gorley company one that we're using. So, and to find that, we can actually do ape networks list, I believe. Yes. We see that Ethereum, Gorley Alchemy. So let's do Ethereum. Ethereum. Default network, Gorley. Not testnet, it's Gorley. And provider, Alchemy. Now, if we do ink from deploy, and if you didn't actually want to do the this here, you could have just done dash s networks. Dash dash s networks, the same command as we did here earlier. Right up here. You could have done that, but let's just do it without it this time. On deploy. Three. Perfect. And you're able to create the whole contract again. So uh, let's not make it again. So let's just keep it as is. Um, and this is pretty cool, pretty powerful. It's really quick and easy. Another really cool way is that we've integrated CLI click commands is pretty powerful because the cool thing about Ape is that we utilize click commands to run our command line interface, CR CLI, which means that you can create Python scripts to deploy contracts in terminal. One of the cool perks is that you can specify which network to run here. So, the click command, we just basically copy all of this and uh, let's see if I've done this already. Yeah, right here. And so you, I basically copied that and had these two extra, these three extra imports to make sure this works. And uh, we're going to try and get this up and running. Right, because it ends with a fork and a network name. So let me try and make this. Mistaken, that's what it is. Perfect. Okay, because we choose a lo local network name, it's not the uh, Gorley, what we're trying to do. It's not the Ethereum Gorley Alchemy, it's just local testnet, and we chose a testnet account. So this actually comes packaged with Ape. Let's see if I can find some documentation about it. Test accounts. Yeah. Here we go. Test accounts. And they are a mnemonic and they come with actual money in it to play with. So you can deploy it as is and it didn't even ask us to prompt because it's just local test and account. So you can use both of these methods to deploy and uh, deploy a smart contract. So thank you so much for listening and following along. Congratulations on deploying your, your uh, contract with Ape. My name is Chris, and if you have any questions or you like a project review, uh, check out the links below and come say hello on Discord. So thank you so much for listening.